Tell us about your book. Hi, my name is Tammy O. Um, I wrote Do You Dream of Terror 2, which is a book about um, seven astronauts are chosen to help colonize a Earth-like planet. And they're, because it takes 23 years to get there, they're teenagers. And I explore the seven different points of view of the astronauts. And I'm really asking Wiley, why would you leave Earth behind forever? So. Mm -hmm. Indeed. <laughs> uh, one of the things I loved about the book is, first off, the speculation is very good. Mm -hmm. The science is good. But you have a very sure hand with the characters. Did you, did you say you had a background in psychology? Oh, well, I have a background in neuroscience. Neuroscience. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how much of a hand it gives, like, how much of a handle it gives you on psychology itself. But I suppose I was probably drawn to neuroscience because of my interest in the brain and consciousness. Mm -hmm. And um, I was definitely thinking about, um, like, outer space as well as inner space. Like, they're on this epic mm -hmm. journey, but also it's a personal journey and, like, a coming-of-age story. Yes. Yeah. I often think that, you know, you really need um, very vivid and very powerful characters in science fiction to carry us into these new worlds, or these different worlds. And uh, just, for example, the, the sequence where Astrid, she's thinking of all the food she'll never eat. And this yeah. takes the form of hunger. And she goes and eats everybody's, everybody's breakfast. <laughs> yeah. And that actually made me tear up. Oh. You know, it, it, it just, and I've written that scene where everyone's getting in, in, into a ship and they're never coming back. Mm -hmm. but maybe, is it maybe a tenth of the book is spent just on that day. Mm -hmm. And it's really, the characters are so strong. So, how long did the book take to write? Um, about five years, yeah. Because mm -hmm. I was writing it all the way through university. So that was about three years. And then um, I kind of, I had like, I, I was maybe on the third or fourth draft by the time I did a master's in creative writing. And the great thing about that was I pretty much worked on it alone for three years. But then I met, I, because you have sort of colleagues and you workshop and you have teachers, I got lots and lots of feedback from different kinds of people. And I think it, um, by the time I tried to send it off to agents, it was a lot more polished than it might have been if I, worked, if I worked all on my own for that year. So that was four years. And then another year of just like rewriting with my agent and then with editors until, yeah, we like put it away so it could get published. Yeah. Pretty much perfect. <laughs> oh, thank you. I mean, it's, it's the, you grew up in UK. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I, I was I was born in London, actually. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> and um, my parents—they're both Nigerian, but my mum went to school in London. My grandma lives in London, so it's sort of like a really kind of like second, third generation mm -hmm. like Nigerian mm -hmm. Londoners. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you, and, but you lived in many African countries also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm quite lucky because my mum worked for the UN. So um, she lived in different countries and in the summer I'd join her. Mm -hmm. So I've lived in Nairobi and um, I spent a year in Ghana um, during what, before I went to university, like a gap year. Whoa. And um, I was working in, I was working at a school in a hospital, which was quite fun. And I got to meet lots of kids and travel around. Really okay, enjoyable. and and that was in Accra or in Accra, no? yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. it's a lovely city. <laughs> yeah, it's a I, beach I loved town. it so much. It was so relaxed. Everyone was so friendly. <laughs> like all my memories of it are really happy. Yeah, it's a beach city. Yeah, <laughs> and, and uh, so is Lagos, but Lagos does not feel like a no, beach city. No, it doesn't feel as relaxed. No, <laughs> no way. <laughs> no, 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 no yeah. way. Yeah, so, so and Kenya. Talk yeah, about Kenya. that was fun. We were in Nairobi then, but we like traveled down to like Lake Naivasha, and that mm -hmm. was really beautiful. I saw like monkeys and like Rift Valley. Yeah, yeah. I love Nairobi. It's a very <laughs> exciting place um, artistically too. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, lots of the art that's coming from there was really cool, and I met some authors who are from there, like um, Yvonne Uwo mm -hmm. and Viavanga Wainana. <gasps> yeah, you met him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's sad uh, what happened to him. But do you have any memory? Oh well, <laughs> my main memory is I went to um, the book launch of Yvonne's um, book Dust, mm -hmm. and uh, she knows me, and my and he knows my mom, but I didn't. We actually hadn't met in person. So I came up to him and I was like, I don't know if you know. And he was like, I know. Of course I know. And But he said it like, I don't know. And then he didn't say my name. And then he walked away. So I was like, did he know? Or is that just what you say to people <laughs> when you don't know their name? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel
feel like now if someone comes up to me and they're like, you may not know me, I'll go, of course. Of course I know. Of course. Of course I know you. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know if you meant like in a knowledge way or in a spiritual way. Yeah. <laughs> he was a terrific friend to science fiction. Yeah, definitely. He, he really encouraged a lot of people. Um, uh, when he's in. Yeah. So, I, yeah, Ashton and Juno were like the two characters I kind of began with when I was thinking mm -hmm. about the kind of people who would decide to leave. I thought um, one of them, it could be sort of based on faith. So Astrid, it, she's seen the pictures, she knows the science, but she just believes that Terra 2 will be amazing. Mm -hmm. Whereas like Juno is quite practical and she, can't, she sees this as an opportunity. She's like, we can make it amazing through our actions. So it's kind of the difference between faith and like action mm -hmm. and um, they're sort of like extreme embodiments of the like different characteristics and they definitely come into conflict all the way through the story oh. yeah. And poppy <laughs> yeah. And yeah I mean it, it there's so much to talk about with it um, and the physics side and the alternate world side mm -hmm. now in this world the British have had uh, rocketry and something like space travel since just about the end of the 19th century? Yeah, I, I sort of mentioned an Edwardian spacesuit <laughs> yeah. in one of the museums, yeah. And it's actually set in 2012, the year mm -hmm. of the London Olympics. Yeah. So you get a lot of, what are the advantages of doing it that way? Well, I wanted, um, well, because I've read a lot of books about space and my main feeling was that like, I, I enjoyed the sort of like wonder that you feel, but I always felt like it was someone else who wasn't like me going to space, which is probably true since I'm probably unlikely to be an astronaut. Um, <laughs> but I wanted the reader to really feel like they were going with the characters. And so I thought if I set it in present day, whatever my present day was, which was 2012, um, then it would be as familiar as possible. And then I tried to put as many familiar things in it. So um, I'll have a launch scene, but then I'll have them unpacking their boxes and finding like hundreds and thousands and like, you know, Oreos and things mm -hmm. like that. So I was, I was sort of always looking to ground it in the present day so that you can kind of imagine you're there too. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, well, <laughs> you certainly could. At times though, I thought if they've had space travel for a hundred years, the question I asked, so did the British Empire end? See, I, it didn't even occur to me that you would think that because in my mind, basically, the whole world is the same except the space travel. <laughs> so the empire happily did end. <laughs> and, you know, all these countries are independent. But um, England still has a, a major place in the world. And even in 2012, yeah. most of us had a sense that maybe this was not going to continue for Definitely. long. Definitely. I mean, England don't have a manned space program. So, oh, okay. <laughs> like, at the moment, right now, anyway. So, <laughs> it was already just like a flight of fantasy. I, I, I think if I really looked into it, if my interest had been in world building this alternate history, mm -hmm. I could probably think of so many secondary and tertiary effects of having this like advanced space yes. travel system that would make the world totally unrecognizable. But I think. Yeah, it was just sort of to serve the plot that was this kind of main driver of that. It certainly decision. meant that you didn't have to invent a whole other world and get bogged down with it. Yeah. Because it's, 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 it's not a short book. Mm. It's not a door stopper either. Mm. No. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, didn't, I didn't want to feel like I had to explain an like, alternate political structure. Or, yeah. Even though that is wonderful when books do that. <laughs> yeah. I'm seeing Harry Potter in it a bit. <laughs> This is so funny because my mom described it as Harry Potter in space, <laughs> which, you know, I'll take because I love Harry Potter. Um, yeah, I think there's this whole boarding school element. There's a we're alone, even though there are adults around, they're conveniently unhelpful mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. can't help us with any of our conflicts. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, definitely. I can see. But also a critique, maybe, of that too, because it, as I keep saying, one of the really skilled things about it is you make quite plain that this school, with its hyper competition, its um, hyper schedule, where you know physical endurance and then you know scientific education, it, it amounts almost to child abuse, and it's not. So can you talk a bit about that? Yeah, so, so in my story, um, because the characters, because it takes 23 years to get to this planet and they want whatever astronauts who are there to be like functional and able to like have a career research on the land, they um, 
decide that the astronauts will have to be quite young. And I definitely do show in the story that like other countries haven't made this choice. It's clearly mm -hmm. just Britain who have chosen to go this route. Uh, and because they have to be 18, 19 when they launch, they have to start training early. So they start training when they're 12. They, they advertise for 12 to 14 year olds. So the adolescence of these characters has basically been taken up training in the school. And it's kind of created this sort of mental space that means that they haven't been able, they've only been able to process the sort of scientific side of going to space and being isolated, but they haven't had enough sort of mental space to think about the implications for the rest of their life and what their values are, which are all things you're starting to realize at that age. And because they haven't, when they get into the spaceship, they have like lots of different conflicts. Yeah. Don't they just? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then there's the, the we, we, no spoilers, but the awful event mm. just before, yeah. which that to me said, ho I mean, that was the moment when I thought, holy cow, something, no, yeah, now I get what's going on. Yeah. And it was, I won't spoil it, but it's, and then from then on, you know that bad stuff can happen. Mm. And it's cleverly structured because Jesse, now Jesse's, what's Jesse's background? Jesse's the other... Uh, oh, well, I think I mentioned that he's mixed race. You mean, definitely. what's his like, racial background? Yeah, yeah well, his no, background uh, in the story? Is, is he's, he's like, is he of an African background, sort of, well, or...? It's, yeah, it's not clear. I think in, because it changed in several drafts, but I know that his dad is white and mm -hmm. his mum is black, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure I'm clear, I make it clear what country she's from. It, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's just of interest. Yeah. It's because, I, you know, it's, I mean, one of the things I admire about it is that it is, it is diverse without trying to strain to be, mm. you know, and it's just, oh, we have two girls from Kenya, and then we have Jesse, yeah. and then we've got Poppy, and we've got Harry, who's every up himself privilege. <laughs> He's Boris Johnson. Guy. He's basically Boris <laughs> Johnson. You were predicting <laughs> Boris Johnson. And he's, you know, he's capable and a big personality. He's just unbearable. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, Jesse is very clever because you start with Jesse. Mm. So all through the almost the first quarter of the book, we're saying, well, what about Jesse? <laughs> you know, he's failed, he's not going to go. Mm. And we wanted Jesse to go, <laughs> and he's not going. And you know, uh, it was one of the things that pulled us through that mm. uh, first bed. It was very cleverly structured that way. Oh, thank you. That actually took a, it was, it took a lot of work, I guess, because I had lots of different points of view characters. Yeah. And I was finding yes. it hard, yeah. <laughs> That's one of the things I loved about it. Because <laughs> you saw everything from everybody's point of view. Yeah, which I really enjoyed. I definitely yeah. enjoyed writing arguments from one person's perspective and then from another. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of people who were reading it were wondering, um, they begin with, um, uh, I began with Ashton Junior, I think in earlier drafts, mm -hmm. but then when I was doing creative writing, a lot of them were like, oh, but Jesse, but Jesse, but Jesse. <laughs> so I, like, in, like, I'd rewrite and rewrite it, and I kept like, moving his chapter earlier and earlier, and then I was finally like, actually, maybe I'll just, so I put it in the beginning, because I think a lot of people seem to like, I guess we can, we can all relate. We can all we all understand how it feels to want something and not get it, and to and then to, or to get it and to feel like an imposter. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can know pretty much all of them, mm. pretty much all of them, and Poppy, the beautiful success person mm. from a quite tough background that she hasn't had to deal with because she's getting all the success, and she's the one that gets space depression. Yeah. <laughs> and and that was like what you kept surprising me with the characters. What happened to them? Oh, that's nice to hear. I'm well, glad. no, and uh, it, it really is. You know, it's beautifully written. It's simply written. Uh, what's next? Oh yeah, I'm working on book two. Uh, uh -huh. It took a while for my book to come out um, because yeah, when we sold it, it didn't come out for another two years. So I've been lucky. I've got like this sort of like quiet space to work on book two. So hopefully we'll hear about that in like the next year. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's cool.